So as we are to consider the final part, which is um, working on our statistics, we must know how to identify outliers. An outlier, uh, as we consider the information, the distribution of our data, let's say we are given a certain information. In actual sense, it is supposed to be forming a linear pattern in terms of the values that will be given. Yes, it might not be exactly a linear like this, but you are supposed to have something of that nature, which is um, uh, the part of your grade 12 mathematics where you shall be referring to a specific line which can be drawn and that is going to be a linear uh, just like a linear function y is equal to mx plus c so like i said it is not a certain thing that the points are exactly forming a linear no but it is a consideration that there are some points which are forming that linear. there are points which will be closer to to the line that will be closer so working with the majority of the points, you can see, all right, a linear function or a straight line can be formed. But of all these points which are circulated uh, on this, which are on the linear function, there can be another one which is somewhere here, or maybe it is somewhere here, maybe, where you can see that the linear function cannot even work by joining the points. The point that we are seeing is referred to as an outlier. The point that we are seeing somewhere there will be referred to as an outlier. So what exactly is it? Of all the given information, we are simply saying an outlier is a data value that does not follow the trend of the rest of what? The date. It does not follow the trend Look where this point is and look where these other points are. This one does not follow the trend. So that is what we refer to as an outlier. So we are simply saying an outlier is a data value. So this one, it is a data value. All right. That does not. That does not. So this is the major part. It does not follow all right it does not follow the trend that is given the trend of the rest of the points that you are given which is the rest of what of the data it does not follow that other points as we are given before so when we are dealing with information or when we are working with the data that is being presented how can someone tell without a graph? You know, great way of mathematics, in most cases, they will just give you a graph. Then you can even just, okay, this is the point. By looking into the points, if points are being given like this, then there's a point which is here. You can simply tell this is an outline. But what if it is not presented graphically? How can someone tell about an outline? So it follows that any outlier, so that is any uh, outlier value, right, can be given as, so it is either of the following. So there are two conditions for an outlier value. The first condition is comparing the lower quarter, which is Q1, to 1,5 times the interquartile range. You compare to 1,5 times the interquartile range. So the first one, we compare Q1. The second one, we compare with Q3, the upper quarter. So the comparison follows that. This one, guys, you just need to take it this way, all right? So this is how we just need to take it. So the first one, any minimum value 
any minimum value that you'll be talking about, which is less than, all right? So any value. So let's just, just uh, talk about any value that is uh, less than, all right? So we're going to have Q1 minus 1,5 of the interquartile range. 1,5 times the interquartile range. Remember how to determine uh, the interquartile range as given before we said uh, the interquartile range is the difference between what? Upper quartile and the lower quartile. So you must find this, then you multiply by 1,5. So a value that is less than, we are talking about any value that is less than this. If it is less than this condition, guys, this condition, that value is an outlier. All right? If the value, as long it is less than this. So that value, uh, mostly you're comparing on those minimum values because this will be like the, the least value that you can ever have on your information. This will be required as the minimum value. So any value that is less than that is an outlier. So you're saying an outlier value is either a value that is less than this, or we can have a condition of a value that is greater than, that is uh, greater than or bigger than what? Now we compare to the maximum of the quartiles which is uh, q3 so this one will be given as a q3 plus we must add this one 1 comma 5 times the interquartile range so compared to that any value that you see that is bigger than this condition is an outlier so what does it actually mean guys what does it actually mean Values that are in within these two conditions. Those are the values that we are working with, that are within these two conditions. Those are the values that we are working with. But values which are not within, which are values that are less than this, become an outlier. Value Any value that is greater than this condition become an outlier. So when you are given your information, you must seek for these two so that you can identify an outlier. You must seek these two first. Then you compare, okay, is this value less than? Is there, an, is there any value that is less than this? Is there any value that is greater than this, that is bigger than this? Is there any value that is less than this? All right, let us consider... Uh, a typical question so that we can uh, properly understand how these questions can be given as uh, because in the given information, we can, all right, let's say we're given this information, then the question is uh, for us to check or to identify any outlier. Check or identify any outlier. So out of the given information, we want to tell. We want to check, we want to see which one of the values of the data that we are given. This is our data, remember? This is our data, this one. Of these data values that we are given, of these numbers, is there any outline? So what we are going to do, because we saw that, the outlier can be worked around the interquartile range, which is knowing the difference between Q1 and Q2. Q1 and uh, Q2 and Q1, sorry. So meaning to say, on this information, our major part in this case is going to be the Q1 and the Q2. Don't worry about the minimum value, the median, the maximum value, right? So we are working with this one. So we saw that the first thing, all right, is going to find the difference, all right, which is our interquartile range. 
That is the difference between what? Q3 and Q1. So let us find uh, the difference. That is our Q3, which is uh, 62. So we're going to have 62 minus Q1, which is uh, 48. So we've got a difference of uh, 14. This is our interquartile range. But on our comparison, we need a value which is less than what? Q1 minus 1,5 of this, all right? So let's find uh, that value first. Q1 minus what? 1,5 of the interquartile range. Okay, let's see uh, what are we going to have. Q1 is there, remember? That is what? 48. So 48 minus uh, 1,5 times the interquartile range, which is what? Which is 14. Remember, we calculated this. All right. So simplify this, guys. On your calculator, you're going to obtain 27. So the question is, do we have a value which is less than this condition of the given data of the given information do we have anything from our data that is less than 27, which is less than this? Do we have something that is less than that? If any data value, guys, that we have there is less than this condition, it becomes an outlier. So of the data value that we are given, do we have anything less than 27? So we check on the information, there is a value which is less than 27 there. There is 11. 11 is less than 27. So therefore, 11 is an outlier. Any value, guys, we are saying, any outlier value is either this. It is either a value that is less than this part. So we calculated this part of Q1 minus 1,5 of the interquartile range. We have it. So we now compare from the data values that we are given here. We compare which one of these values is less than what? 27. So we saw that there is what? 11. So therefore, 11 is an outlier. Okay? That, is, that was a comparison from a data value which is less than this, is it the only comparison? No. Remember, there are two. The other comparison is what? Any value which is greater than what? Q3 plus 1,5 of the interquartile range. So let's find this first. Then we can compare. That is how you simply answer these questions. All right? So we are going to have another comparison. Remember? The data value that you must be having from there must be greater than what? Q3 plus 1,5 of the interquartile range. Okay, so let's find this one. Okay, uh, that's our Q3, uh, which is uh, from this information. Remember, Q3 was what? Uh, 62. So you're going to have 62 plus 1,5 of the interquartile range, which is what? Which is 14. So that was going to give us a value. In this case, you must simplify uh, the exact part from your calculator. Uh, that was going to give us 83. All right. So the question is, do we have any of the data values, any number that is bigger than 83? Any number that is greater than this becomes what? An outlier. So do we have such? So if we are to looking, uh, if we are to look into the information, the maximum value is 69. We do not have anything that is bigger than what? 83. So meaning to say, we do not have any other outlier there. If there was any of the of the given data that we are given here, if there was any value which is bigger than 83, 
Let's say it is 88. Maybe it is 100. We are going to say these numbers, they are outliers. But we can see that we do not have that. The, the, the largest or the maximum value on our data is what? Is 69. We do not have anything that is bigger than 83. So on this comparison, there is nothing that we are obtaining. But from this first comparison, this one, of a value which is less than 27, it is there. There is a value which is less than 27, which is what? Which is 11. So 11 becomes our final answer. That is the only uh, outlier that we have uh, of the given uh, data. Uh, 11 is the only outlier that we have. So we are simply saying, by calculation, an outlier or outliers can be identified. But when it is from the graph, you can simply observe how the distribution, how the data is, the trend, how, you know, how, how, how the trend is given. If the trend is given in a linear way like this, then you see any other point away from that trend that becomes an outlier or by calculation, where you need to know uh, these two conditions. So that is how we can answer these questions. Uh, let us do, revise as many questions as we can uh, as we are preparing ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time. Uh, make sure that you now revise, uh, work out as many question papers because you are now done uh, with each and every section of your uh, topic of the statistics. So it is uh, an, uh, an appointment that you need to give yourself that time. You need to work as many question papers. Uh, give yourself time. Revise uh, those typical exam questions because they, it is just like a repetition. So the more you do the question papers, the more you understand how questions can be given. So that is it, guys. Uh, till we meet again.